What is up everybody? I hope you guys are doing well today. My name is Drake Pfizer, once again with DSF Financial, showing like-minded individuals, the ATM business, and how I'm making my money work for me through passive income. If you're new to the channel, I appreciate you taking a look. Welcome. My goal for you at the end of this video is to make sure you learn a little something about the ATM business, as well as getting you one step closer to financial independence, or if you're already there, keeping it. I know it's been a couple weeks since my last video. I hope you guys did not miss me too much. Now, a question that I do get quite often is how do I program an ATM? Now, as easy as it is, it's also rather hard, if that makes sense at all. Now with the actual programming, it is not that hard to do, uh, but knowing the, the vocabulary to know where to click, how to click it, uh, that is what makes it a little difficult. Now, if you guys are old enough to remember the old texting method where you had to type uh, the numbers quickly in order to get the number, let's say you wanted to get uh, T, you would have to hit eight a couple times, uh, that's the type of method of programming that you have to do with numbers in the ATM, which is a little confusing, but after you get in the rhythm, get in the hang of things, uh, it gets pretty quick. Now, as difficult as it is, uh, or it can be without any uh, ATM experience, I'm gonna show you guys what I can, and uh, hopefully you guys can learn a little something. Now, unfortunately, one of my machines, it is at uh, one of my hotels that I have. It's a, uh, it's a Hyasung 1800 SE, it has been having keyboard issues. Unfortunately, now I've had my second keyboard issue with the highest sun machine. They have said they, as in the experts in the ATM world, people with tons and tons of experience, have mentioned that highest sun machines do tend to have issues with keypads. And, uh, and now this is my second one that I'm dealing with. Uh, it is an uh, Hyasung 1800 SE that has been in one of my locations uh, for, I guess, uh, 10, 11 months now. And it's been doing well, uh, but all of a sudden the past uh, couple weeks, I've been getting an error code saying that is a, uh, it's a keypad error. Um, unfortunately, I do think the keypad needs to get replaced. So what I'm going to do is swap out one of my ATMs that I have laying around and I'm going to throw that into the location so I can actually work on the ATM that needs the keypad fixed. I'm going to be able to work at that in the comfort of my home. The last thing I want to do is tearing apart an ATM at a location and then getting stumped on something, getting stuck or something else happening and then I'm lost and looking kind of dumb at the location and I do not want that at all. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go take you guys along to program one of my other machines that I have and uh, I'm gonna bring that to the location. Now for you guys, I'm gonna show you what I can with the programming uh, and kind of take you along for the ride. And for me, I haven't had to program any uh, Gen Mega machines, so this is a learning curve for me as well. Uh, but luckily, I do have some great support with my processor, ATM Central. John, he makes it uh, as clear as possible for me, so thank you for that. Now, some things that do need to be programmed in the machine are uh, things like the internet connection. How are we going to be connecting the ATM? Are we going to be hooking it up with an Ethernet cable? Are we hooking it up with a Wi-Fi router, a wireless router? Or are we just uh, doing the phone jack? I would not recommend ever using a phone jack, especially in 2020, but some machines do still uh, use the phone jack and uh, I have to make sure that the machine is programmed properly to show that the phone jack is not being used. It is going to be a, a straight ethernet connection. At the hotel that I'm installing it, uh, it already does have the highest sung in there. It's already running. Um, and all I need to do is just uh, plug in the ATM as well as the ethernet cable and I should be off to the races. Something else you have to program is the terminal ID, what code your ATM is gonna be under, under the processing company that you're working with. And there's also a hundred other things that you could program with it that I'm not even gonna to have to worry about. Uh, some of these things are gonna be like the header, the footer on the receipt paper, the ATM owner, different, uh, different processing methods, um, different transaction postings. 
I could either do, you know, change the surcharge to $3, 325. I could set it up to take out a percentage of the transaction. For this certain situation, I'm just doing a basic uh, setup for it. It that won't need any uh, new bells and whistles or anything. Um, just a straight connection. Uh, I'm gonna do a 395 surcharge though at this, uh, this hotel. It is an extended stay hotel, so people do live there and they become dependent on the ATM as well. So I'm gonna try and capitalize that as much as I can. Now, one of the main things to program in an ATM is the master keys. That is the special coding that the ATM is gonna take and it's gonna process, or it's gonna to link to the processor so the processor can make sure it's running properly and it has a code attached to it. Now with ATMs, we are working with people's banks, people's uh, cards, so it does have to be as secure as possible and it does even have extra security features like additional passwords that you have to install the master keys. So hopefully I can remember all the master keys that I've that I've added so that'll make the process a lot quicker for me. Now honestly, one thing that makes the uh, the programming process as streamlined as possible is I do have uh, kind of step-by-step -step guides on what to do. Step one, step two, step three, um, which really, really does make the process a lot easier and uh, a lot quicker. Um, right now I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to download and print out the master keys for this ATM so I can have it with me with the, uh, when I'm programming the ATM. It's just downstairs. I don't have to go too far for it. Uh, but I want to make sure to print out this paper here. And, uh, and then we can go get to programming. All right. Now for me, I'm hoping I can program everything uh, within you know, 25, 30 minutes. Uh, once again, it is the first time that I've programmed the Gen Mega, so I'm hoping it'll be fairly easy, uh, especially with the directions that I have. Uh, but in life, there's always glitches, there's always things that happen. So hopefully I can iron those out as quickly as possible and I can get that thing programmed and good to go. Got the master keys here and uh, now off to the ATM. Ugh. All right, so with this ATM here, it is a... Uh, it's a Gen Mega, and it is my second Gen Mega that I'm installing. Uh, first one that I'm having to uh, program myself, though. If you live upstairs, don't try and take an ATM upstairs. It doesn't work out very well. So I'm gonna uh, get you guys lined up here for the ATM. One is missing. One is missing, one ATM here I did get installed at, uh, at the uh, hotel that I was talking about a while ago. And it's actually doing pretty well. Um, this past weekend, the ATM actually was kicking butt because the hotel was super busy. I wanna say the hotel was sold out Friday and Saturday night, uh, which obviously helps out the transactions. When there's more people in the hotel, the ATM gets used more. Go figure. So let's try and get this thing going. It is uh, just about 4.30 for me. If you can see here, uh, the nest that I have here, it is 4.26. So let's quickly, I can get this taken care of. Uh, I'm gonna try and get you guys a good view here of the programming. And I use uh, one of my garage seats to help me program. So let's go. So you know what I mean here with the uh, programming. When typing in the letters, let's just say I was trying to get E, which is right there. I would have to hit that twice in order to get E. So hit three, one, two, will give me three. That's kind of what I mean by the old school texting method.
just uh, plugged in the internet here to show that uh, we have access to it. Looks like I did the test a little early, so I'm gonna do it again here. Hopefully we pass again. So now that part is done. Now I have to go to uh, the host management to make sure that everything is transaction wise is gonna be running properly. test it so let's go do that all right and I'm back so what I like to do after a programming machine as well as when I install the machine I want to make sure everything's working properly specifically the communication to the processor so what I do is I just put in uh, one of my bank cards it is an expired card that I have and I just type in a random pin number to try and uh, do a to try and do a transaction. I try and do a transaction to make sure that it is working properly. If not, it allows me to uh, figure out why it is not working. So what I'm getting here is a communication issue with the card reader. All right, so for some reason, the, uh, the card reader, the chip reader wasn't working there for a second. I don't know if you saw, uh, but I did just reset the, uh, the computer or the ATM itself to kind of reset everything and then starting fresh. And now it should work, hopefully. All right. So now I'm just going to type in a random PIN number. Just do cash, cash withdraw, withdraw. Say, I'm going to print it. Checking $20. And then it says, do I wish to, uh, to pay the fee? I did already set up the DSF financial for the 395 transaction. And it declined. So it is going to print me out a receipt, hopefully telling me that the PIN number was incorrect. 
And then it also tell me what time it is right now, uh, which will show what time we finished it. So, as you guys can see here, it uh, does have an invalid pin. And uh, it is 4.59 right now. So that took almost about a half hour without the, uh, the nephew having the tumble and me having to go save him. So not bad, if I do say so myself. Now I'm going to take you guys upstairs here, and then we can uh, take a look at the uh, online processing for it to hopefully show that uh, it is working now on the processing end as well. Now with this company, I do, do, I do use PAI, um, Payment Alliance, uh, which is way better than Columbus Data from what I've noticed. It's a lot more user-friendly and a lot more streamlined, which is good. Now... It is there, baby. Yep, looks like it's good to go. It's working just fine. I do see uh, my credit card transaction there decline on the account, which does allow me to know that it is reading properly. Now, 30 minutes all in all, in my opinion, I think it's pretty darn good considering uh, I haven't really done too many of these. It was my first, uh, the first um, hand tell gen slash gen mega that I, uh, that I did. And uh, 30 minutes, I don't think it's too bad. Granted, I did program a lot of the items already in the machine, things that uh, are really easy to do. You know, changing the date, changing the time, adding how much the surcharge is gonna be, uh, adding who the ATM owner is, DSF Financial, uh, adding the headers, the footers on the receipt paper. So I've already done kind of all that. That only takes probably 15 minutes or so to program all that. And then the hard part is that uh, that key processing. I fast forwarded it there for you guys, but uh, that right there was mainly most of the time waiting for the ATM to allow me to put in the master keys or actually putting in the master keys. If you guys have not done so, please hit that subscribe button for me, hit that bell notification. If you guys have any questions on the programming or whatnot, I, I'm happy to answer what I can for you. Uh, it'll definitely be in more detail in the course but if you need something i'm always here for you guys i hope you guys are enjoying your sunday fun day but please keep grinding keep hustling just like it's monday until next time guys later